Nigeria is currently faced with a dilemma on which region deserves to get the presidency in 2023. Some stakeholders in the country have already pointed out that it is the turn of the South, with major emphasis being made by other statesmen in the country that the evils in particular deserve to get a shot at the presidency, describing the Yoruba presidential ambition as awkward. Prominent socio-political groups from different parts of the country, including a Feniferi Renewal Group, Pan Niger Delta Forum, and Middlebelt Forum, have insisted that the Igbos should produce the president of Nigeria in 2023 for equity, justice, and fairness. The group spoke in Abuja at the Greater Nigeria Conference, organized by leaders and friends of the Southeast Geopolitical Zone with the theme, Together We Can. Joining us on this show this morning, as we take a look at the chances of an Igbo presidency in the next election, is Senator Victor Ume, former national chairman of the All Progressives Grand Alliance. Welcome to the morning show, Senator Ume. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Good morning, Ruben. Good morning, uh, Senator. Welcome, viewers and uh, listeners. Well, Senator Ume, very quickly. I mean, um, we've been on this matter about Igbo presidency on the grounds of fairness, equity, and justice. And the same phrase was echoed at the Greater Nigerian Conference held in Abuja, involving the Afeniferi, the Afeniferi Renewal Group, the Middle Belt uh, Forum, and the, uh, uh, the Niger Data Forum, the PANDEF. But uh, what we hear is that uh, the PDP is not planning uh, to zone anything to any part of the country, particularly the presidency. Screening in the PDP starts today. Presidential aspirants will be screened on Friday. And the plan is that uh, the National Executive Committee will meet on Wednesday after the fact to take a decision on zoning, after everybody will have been there. Uh, uh, screen for various positions. <coughs> Hence, the camp of Peter Obi is protesting. In the uh, APC, uh, the other major political party, it looks like nobody is talking about uh, Igbo presidency with the kind of seriousness that you will expect. What's your take on this? Because some Igbo stakeholders are saying, look, this is unfair, this is unjust, and that Nigeria cannot treat Igbos this way, considering the fact that in 1999, there was some kind of agreement uh, to allow two major Yoruba gladiators, uh, Ulufala chief, and Chief Olusha Gonvasanjo, to move forward. So why is it different with Igbos? Um, thank you very much, Ruben. I think uh, at this point in Nigeria, at this time in Nigeria, Every patriotic Nigerian should be working towards uniting the country. The country is getting polarized along uh, interests of various groups in Nigeria. And uh, looking at the upcoming contest on who becomes the president of Nigeria, anybody who wishes Nigeria well will want to see a Nigeria where we shall practice equity and fairness. Uh, it doesn't matter what anybody wants or what a political party thinks about. What is most important is the action, the right action that will unite all Nigerians. If you want to be president of Nigeria, you must be hoping to preside over a united country. And the only thing that can unite Nigeria is... Um, patronage of all parts of Nigeria. In the case of who becomes the president of Nigeria in 2023, it is very right for people to look at the historical sharing of power in Nigeria to determine where the right candidate will come from in 2023. The first is that uh, uh, because of um, the various um, interests uh, operating in the polity, we have come a different fora in the past to agree that it is important 
that power or presidency should be rotated between the north and the south of Nigeria. It's a practice that has been on in 2014 National Conference. We looked at all the vex issues concerning power sharing in Nigeria. Because every part of Nigeria wants to produce president for Nigeria because of the way the country has been run over the years. And at the National Conference, we agreed unanimously that power should sh rotate between the North and the South, and then across the geopolitical zones. In other words, if a president comes from the North, Northern part of Nigeria, and that president serves for eight years, power or the presidency should rotate to the South. And when the presidency rotates to the South, when a zone produces a president for eight years, its power will return to the North. And when it gets back to the North, it will go to a zone that has not produced the president. So this was an agreement reached consensuously, you know, um, at the national uh, conference. And it has been in practice, even uh, uh, from the way things have happened between 1999 and now. Obasanjo was president uh, in 1999 because of the need to address the grievances of the southwest of Nigeria uh, following the annulment of uh, Abiola's victory in 1993. And uh, Nadeko that uh, led the pressure uh, against Nigeria at that time made things uh, very tough for Nigeria. Nigeria almost became ungovernable to the extent that Babangida had to be forced out of power. He had to hand over to an interim government, which was a contraption, you know, to show you the, the heat on the seat of government at that time. And when in 1999, uh, it was uh, possible to get this done, in 1998, the, the PDP and uh, uh, the political gladiators uh, felt that there was need to appease the people of the Southwest. And that was the effort that led to uh, Obasanjo being called out from prison to become the candidate of the PDP a, 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 a ahead of Dr. Lex Ekweme, who was the founding chairman of PDP, who wanted to run for the presidency, and it was t he was tipped to succeed uh, uh, the military uh, uh, past leader, you know. But through this um, uh, 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 arrangement, the Southwest was given the opportunity to present the president. There were three political parties at that time, the PDP, the All People's Party, and uh, the Alliance for Democracy. In an alliance, Alliance for Democracy and the APP, APP produced Olufale for uh, the presidential ticket, and PDP produced Obasanjo. The whole country, in respect to this, uh, in difference to the Southwest people, uh, to produce the president because of Abiola's uh, 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 problem, uh, we voted for only two candidates in Nigeria. Olufale and uh, Olushego Obasanjo. So the presidency was contested by the Southwest Zone alone in 1999. When Obasanjo served out because he won, the presidency returned to the North. In keeping with this principle of rotation, it became Yaradua, uh, Omar Musa Yaradua, who unfortunately died three years into his first term in office. Jonathan had to serve out his tenure and contested as an incumbent president, and won in 2011. Uh, it wasn't an easy contest, because the North felt that they have not served out their eight-year tenure, as uh, agreed on rotation. By 2015, the country was so palpable that the North insisted that power must return to them. And it was through that process that Buhari became president in 2015. Even members of the PDP, Jonathan, President Jonathan's party, worked for uh, Buhari to become president in 2015. If you look at it again, you will see that um, those in the PDP, even members of Jonathan's government, worked for Buhari to become president. The PDP governors, a number of them, had to cross carpet or rather defected to the APC to ensure that uh, the presidency returned to the north. That's what we had. And now, Buhari is serving out eight years' term. 
in by next year. And we are talking about where will power go to. I don't know what PDP is trying to do to Nigeria. By that rotation, it is clearly obvious that the next president should come from the southern part of Nigeria on this principle of rotation of uh, power, uh, uh, presidency to keep Nigeria together. Because uh, what is paramount in this uh, choice we are going to make will be to keep Nigeria truly united. Today we have many countries inside Nigeria. And the only thing that we can do is to take conscious efforts to unite Nigeria. Now, if the presidency is to come to the southern part of Nigeria, PDP has no reason to say that they're keeping, uh, they will zone the presidency. Who are they talking to? We're all Nigerians, and uh, they cannot run away from this. Even in their constitution, they have zoning in PDP constitution. So the, the justice of the matter at this time is that the presidency must come to the southern part of Nigeria in keeping with this principle of rotation that is designed to keep Nigeria together, you know. So now that the presidency should come to the south, is he going to go to southwest, where President Obasanjo has served eight years before power returned to the north? Or now that they have the vice president who is serving out eight years tenure, is it just for the presidency to go back to the uh, southwest? It is not. The south-south that is part of the south has produced Jonathan for six years as president. The Southeast has not been president at all. So the justice of the matter is that the presidency should rotate to the Southeast zone of Nigeria in keeping with that principle that we should put, keep Nigeria together. And that is why we in the Greater Nigeria, that put up the Greater Nigeria Conference on Monday, 25th of April, uh, decided to bring progressive leaders and statesmen across Nigeria to come and be part of this discussion. We were delighted that uh, pa Edwin Clark, a 95-year-old man by next month, was able to say the truth. He traced the historical sharing of power in Nigeria and concluded that power should go to the southeast, or rather the president should come from the southeast of Nigeria. Not necessarily Igbo people. The southeast because it's a zonal arrangement, zonal sharing of power. He said so. And uh, Pa Ayo Adebanjo, a 94-year-old man, came up live and traced the historical sharing of power in Nigeria and said that it is the Southeast that should produce the president for Nigeria in 2023, so that Nigeria will continue to be together. He described any attempt by any person from Southwest to contest for presidency as inelegant, you know, and not a God, uh, in accord with good conscience. The same thing with the South-South where President Goodluck Jonathan has served for six years. So no, in sharing power, for the important thing for us is to is, important thing for us is to make effort to keep Nigeria together. Nigeria is a fragile union. You can see it now. And this um, uh, pressure that the PDP elements from the northern part of Nigeria are trying to bring on Nigeria is aimed at uh, dismembering the country. There's nothing like uh, 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 somebody who has sat for eight years looking for uh, 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 succession uh, for another eight years in Nigeria. Nigeria is for everybody. And the only thing that can heal us, our wounds, will be accommodation of all parts of Nigeria. When it gets to your zone, you will be entitled to contest. So um, at this time, uh, I can tell you, uh, uh, Ruben, that uh, Dr. Ruben, that. Anybody who is saying that the Southeast is not justified in their quest to produce the next president for Nigeria is paying lip service to the unity of Nigeria. This is something we should not encourage. So if PDP is standing, starting their screening today, they can go on and screen them. Even for them to achieve a consensus from the northern part of Nigeria, it is very elusive. They, are all, uh, they, they want to foist confusion to Nigeria. As for the APC, uh, APC said they have zoned the presidency to the south, but we are looking for an affirmative action in the next uh, primary they will conduct. Let us see if they will exclude everybody from the north in the primary that they are going to con uh, conduct. Um, we have people from the uh, southeast in APC that are running for president. Dr. Chris Ngige has declared 
there are other people who are there waiting for uh, Mr. President to give them the nod. And then they will declare. Some are showing interest, how be it uh, uh, um, casually. But the important thing is that when the decision is made, the Southeast has an array of hopefuls who can do that. Rocha Sokorocha has also declared in APC. Emeka Majoba, the current Minister of State for Education, is in the race. So we have people who can do it. In PDP, we have people. In other parties, we have people. What the GNC did on Monday was to demonstrate that we have competent, capable people who can provide leadership. P2B right. has declared right, in Senator. PDP too. So it's not, as a, it's not for want of person that uh, uh, whoever is uh, trying to sabotage this uh, 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 just quest by the Southeast to produce president. Right. I want to underscore that nuance there. You're referring specifically to a Southeast president, not an Igbo president, because they're people of Igbo extraction from other parts of the country. And But my question for you is that Senator Oji Uzokalu has been reported as saying that he may withdraw from the presidential race if the parties, the two major parties, do not zone the presidential ticket to the Southeast. What do you make of that? Does that seem to suggest to you that a southeastern president will not emerge as president of Nigeria unless both parties microzone in that example that you gave of the 1999 situation that we had here, which I have a problem with, but I'll leave that. But are you saying, is that, is that what we're supposed to take from Senator Oji Kalu's position, that he might withdraw if it's not microzone to the southeast? And what should happen if he does withdraw? Will other really viable candidates from the southeast also feel they have to withdraw if they don't stand a chance against other um, candidates from across the country? No. Uh, if Senator Jozokalo decides to withdraw from the race, that does not mean that others will withdraw. Uh, what we are saying is that uh, perhaps because the two, bigger, the, bigger, the two big parties, APC and uh, PDP, um, will be the, the, the hotspot for this contest because they are larger in size. But the Southeast Presidency is, um, uh, is one that we are uh, uh, campaigning for, not necessarily the Igbo Presidency. It is uh, by happenstance that uh, the Southeast is a homogeneous uh, zone uh, 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 where the Igbo people uh, uh, live, you know. Uh, the other zones, like South-South, uh, uh, there are Igbo people there uh, who are also uh, wanting to run for presidency. But our, our campaign is for the justice of the matter on the basis of zonal rotation, not uh, uh, between Hausa, Yoruba, Igbo, and Fulani, or other people. No, that's not the essence. We are saying that power will rotate across the geopolitical zones, and the only zone that is still uh, 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 outstanding in producing a president for Nigeria is the Southeast zone. The South-South has produced the president. In the South-South, you have other ethnic nationalities. You have the Ijo, you have the Edo people, you have the Bini people, you have the Shekiri, you have the Ijo, you have uh, Efik, you have Ibibio, you have the Igbos as well in the South-South. Uh, you have the Anyoma people in the South-South. So if it gets to the turn of the South-South in this zonal rotation, all of them are free to aspire to contest for presidency. But now that it is uh, evidently clear that it is the Southeast that uh, has to produce the president for the basis of equity and fairness, and for Nigeria to forge on, forge on as a strong nation, united in, uh, uh, in faith and uh, acceptance, that all parts of Nigeria are Nigerians. So it is, it is the Southeast that uh, is supposed to be this. Let me give you another example, like the Southwest. When the contest uh, for presidency was left for the people of the Southwest zone, we have the jaws in the Southwest zone. Have you forgotten that in the Ondo state, for example, you have the Yoruba people of uh, Ondo state, and they're Nigerians. If they, even though the Yorubas are predominant, or that, that the dominant ethnic group in the Southwest zone. It does not remove the fact that there are no Ijaws in, in those states that are from the Southwest zone. So it's a similar thing. So what we are asking Nigerians to do, indeed, 
the major political parties and indeed all political parties to do is for them to help the effort in nation building. Let us work together as a people. Okay. The, 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 the people from the northern part of Nigeria who want to be president in 2023 have been unnecessarily okay. arrogant okay. and insensitive if, if you can, to, the, to the yearnings of, you can uh, hear of the greater uh, spectrum of people. If, yeah. if you can hear me. So that same word you said yeah. is what people like, mm -hmm. you know, Hakim Baba Ahmed of the uh, Northern Elders Forum will say they don't want to hear. They always say, okay, come talk to us if you want it. He's been on this show a couple of times, and that's his position. He says, don't just sit down there and say, okay, it's my turn. Give it to me. Don't say I'm arrogant. Come talk to me about it. That's what they keep saying. Because, you see, the South wants it because of fairness and justice. Everybody says, okay, the Southeast should get it. But it has to do business with other parts of the country. So they are saying, come talk to us. What yes, do you yes, see correct. as regards that? Are you making moves to talk into them? Or is it just a middle belt forum you will talk to? We are, we are talking to all Nigerians to see the justice of this matter. Uh, uh, Baba Ahmed, who has uh, said those things, he said, uh, it's just a, a plain ostrich. Let me tell him on this program that Northern Nigeria cannot produce president for Nigeria without the support of Southern Nigeria. We have six states in the Federation of Nigeria, at least by the, uh, the arrangement we have on ground. 19 states are from the Northern part of Nigeria and 17 states are from the southern part of Nigeria. If somebody begins to talk in a manner that he does not understand the need for give and take, cooperation with uh, all parts of Nigeria in pursuing the presidency, let us have a sharp divide and go to the president. Let them fill the candidate from the north. I know that the middle belt is already out of in sync in what uh, Ahmed is saying. Uh, Dr. Beatrice Pogu, who was a guest speaker in the Greater Nigerian Conference on Monday, was very hard on this matter. That if you really want Nigeria to continue to exist as a country, you need to practice fairness, accommodation, inclusiveness. You cannot divorce these things from the project called Nigeria. So if we say, let the southern people of Nigeria vote for one person, let the northern, uh, they call northern people because the Middle Belt Forum is supporting the agitation of the southeast and the southern Nigeria, to produce a, a president. If that division is made, I can tell Ahmed that he will never produce president in Nigeria, even if we, contest, we conduct the election 20 times. It's not possible. So that spirit of give and take is what everybody must demonstrate at this point in time. Well, How sir. to put every, everybody together. Yeah. If, we become, if we begin to become selfish about this, then we are now adding those who want Nigeria to disintegrate. We want Nigeria to be together because of the size and the potentials of the diversity that we have and the things God has endowed us with. We can harness all of them and become a very strong, prosperous nation. But the only way Nigeria can survive is by people telling themselves the truth that this Nigeria you are talking about, you have 250 ethnic nationalities, though divided into six geopolitical zones now. So for you to exist as one indivisible entity, there is need to respect the wishes and dreams of other parts of Nigeria in this exercise. Nobody can do it alone. In 1979, remember, the presidential election did not produce a clear winner between uh, President Shehu Shagari, uh, Obafemi Awolowo, and then Namda Zikiwe. The ballot could not be decided there was no absolute majority by, won by the National Party of Nigeria. NPP from the uh, Southeast had to go into an alliance with uh, the NPN of the North to produce a, a government in 1979. That is simply to show you that it is not easy for anybody to go it alone. So we need each other. And I want to emphasize that the only way we can preserve the unity of Nigeria is by purging ourselves of this uh, ambition that we must rule, we must be in charge. Where is that population? Because sometimes I read, they say that the population will have the number. What number do you have? 
if you collect all the voters in Nigeria and give them a free and fair, uh, credible election, okay. how would you not do it without the South? It mind. is impossible. Yeah, so we are, we are building bridges. Well, we are building bridges across. Our aspirants from the East are going to the North, to the West, to the South-South. And we are happy that the Middle Belt, the Niger, I mean the South-South, and uh, uh, the well, Southwest well, leaders if I can have come told here, them the truth. If I can come in here. At this moment, yeah. there is no clear indication, yeah. as I said earlier, that the two major political parties yeah. are committed to the Igbo presidency agenda. Secondly, you've been talking about unity, unity. It doesn't look like the uh, professional political class is listening. The Northern Elders Forum intervened, protecting the interests of uh, the North, more or less, saying that, look, this is what the situation yeah. is. In the PDP, the major opposition party, the National Publicity Secretary yesterday said, look, the party is going to go the way of the Constitution. That the Constitution of Nigeria says everybody has equal rights. He had forgotten about Section 7, <laughs> 3C of the Constitution of the PDP. Okay? And I think that it's because of this concern for unity and all of that, that uh, a prominent uh, statesman like uh, Chief Afeba Balala SA proposed the other week that maybe we should forget about the 2023 elections. Take the Constitution. Fix it first before Nigeria can move forward. Do you align with people who think that uh, 2023 elections may have to be postponed until Nigeria resolves its problems? Because if that, those problems are well, not resolved, um, you may uh, well forget what? about what you are looking for. Well, that is a, that's a far-reaching uh, statement made by an, an elderly statesman in Nigeria, Afrobola uh, S.A.N. Uh, we share in that uh, 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 position he has taken very much in the past. It's not the first time we're talking about the constitutional aberration we have in Nigeria. The constitution we operating in Nigeria was not made by the Nigerian people. It was a constitution that was imposed by the military while living uh, uh, reigns of power in 1999. There was no constituent assembly that made that constitution that we're operating today. So it's a constitution that has been imposed on the Nigerian people by the military and all the things they put in that constitution have made it very impossible, practically impossible, to amend any section of that constitution. So it is uh, like uh, when people get frustrated, they come out with that type of suggestion. And I believe that if Nigeria continues to um, use this 1999 constitution, whether they call it as amended, because they have not amended any serious section in that constitution, Nigeria will continue to grope in the dark. I have myself said so about uh, uh, 10 years ago, I remember in Abuja, myself, Abalabi Musa, Alak Abalabi Musa of blessed memory, and Dr. Tunji Breitwait, and some other progressives gathered in Abuja and uh, rejected this constitution. Because this constitution was made by the Nigerian people. The preamble is, there, is that we, the Nigerian people, hereby give ourselves this constitution. It's a fraud. Professor Akino Yebode of the University of Lagos, we have had cause to discuss this, even in open programs like this. And we can trace the problems in Nigeria to that constitution. And it is that constitution that making someone like uh, Baba Ahmed to say what he's saying, because he thinks that with that constitution, they will continue to prevail over others in Nigeria. The structural imbalances in that constitution, there shall be 774 local governments in the Federation of Nigeria, there shall be 36 states in the Federation of Nigeria, all of them listed in the same constitution. Yet, they have made it practically impossible for one additional local government to be created in Nigeria through that constitution, one additional state to be created. So the, the military just locked up Nigeria after dismembering Nigeria into their convenient fiefdoms and then uh, said we must continue to use that constitution. That's where we are. So, uh, Afeb Alola, who is a, a, a very uh, brilliant lawyer, has seen the futility of sustaining this constitution in building a united country called Nigeria. 
And that's why he says we should forget about it and go to it. Out of frustration, various uh, uh, groups, ethnic nationalities, have called for the restructuring of Nigeria. At some point, restructuring was on the, on the peak in Nigeria. The agitation for restructuring was in the peak across Nigeria. And suddenly, everything went down. And uh, those who uh, control the levers of power went round and uh, looked like they have uh, dimmed the light of demand for restructuring. Why people are asking for restructuring is that what the constitution contains as the structural arrangement of Nigeria is fraudulent. It cannot happen. There's no way a state like Kano should have 44 local governments. These were created by the military. Jigawa has about 38 local governments, all created by the military. They created the state. So if you look at this uh, structure we are operating, they feel that they have the majority of local governments. And uh, when you go to a national convention of a political party, delegates come from local governments, delegates come from the uh, states. And that is the, what is giving them this air of importance that they cannot share power with anybody. But any time you come to Abuja on a national convention of a political party, that they have the delegates to swing who becomes the candidate. They may have, based on this constitution, but they're endangering the life of Nigeria. That's what we are saying. So the, this is what they must make, uh, uh, they must understand clearly that they cannot hold Nigeria uh, this way and think that Nigeria will continue to exist. There are separate uh, agitations across Nigeria. I have been speaking about the agitation by IPOB. IPOB has said, please, if you don't want us to be part of Nigeria, allow us to go. And you say they will not go. This is part of the problems we have. So if you, you go around Nigeria and see pockets of resistance, people are calling for various things. The Ududuwa Republic, the, the Southwest Zone, we are setting it up as well. Uh, Sunday Boho uh, was pursued out of Nigeria. Uh, Namdekano is being detained and all that. These are things that are bringing pressure on Nigeria as a result of people not being sensitive to the plight of other people in Nigeria. You cannot keep people together by force. The only thing that can keep people together uh, is a sense of belonging. If you are fair and just to all concerned, you know, it's just like the four-way test. Anything you want to do, is it fair to all concerned? Will it promote goodwill? So if you say now that the North must produce president in 2023, is he going to promote goodwill in Nigeria? The answer is capital no. So we must tell ourselves the truth and begin to build the nation. And the only thing that can build Nigeria to become a virile, uh, progressive nation will be harnessing the uh, potentials of all Nigerians, making Nigeria available to all its citizens Equality of citizenship rights must be guaranteed. Not what the constitution says, but what you practice. You must practice what the constitution says. This constitution we are operating, even though it is a, uh, is a fraudulent constitution, is still operated in breach. In breach. Because section 14 of the Nigerian constitution, 1999, the military gave us, spoke about federal character. That no part of Nigeria shall dominate any activities of government against other parts of Nigeria. In other words, that section of the constitution which they inadvertently uh, put in that constitution was aimed at promoting balance in what we do. Do we do that in Nigeria today? Do we, should, do we share uh, political appointments equitably across Nigeria? Do we share resources equitably? Is the person who is president of Nigeria running Nigeria even-handedly so that when you do things, Nigerians will have faith in your leadership. So that section 14.3, which is being operated in breach uh, uh, in Nigeria, is also responsible for all the agitations you are seeing. You know? So if they are applying section 14.3, that appointing people to all the agencies of government, or all the things we do in Nigeria, must be in accord with balance, in a manner that no ethnic group, no uh, religious group, or no uh, uh, part of Nigeria will dominate others, then there will be no agitation for uh, power rotation. Mm. But because it is not done like that, people are angling 
to have a test of the presidency to show that they are part of Nigeria. And you cannot keep Nigerians together by force. That is the, what we are saying. And I've been saying this as, a, as an individual. I've been saying it as part of various, various many groups in Nigeria. We are interested in Nigeria surviving, but it cannot survive with the way we are running Nigeria. So 2023 is a, is a, is a great opportunity for Nigeria to begin to work together. Well, uh, those Senator. who want to be president from the north should perish the thought. They should perish the thought. Senator. And when you come down to the south, we, we should, yes, Point where made. Dr. Ruben. Point where made. We would have loved to talk to you about Abga, but we seem to have run out of time. Thank you very much. Okay.